Hey, good morning. I hope and pray you are doing well. You know, in these last days, it is very important that we remain diligent. I know that there is many doctrines that have come forth throughout the world that state that we can live any way we want once we receive the love and grace of, of Jesus Christ the Lord. So I'd like to I'd like to read out of first John. And this is actually a warning that John has given through the power of the Holy Spirit to believers. This entire book was wrote to believers, those who are followers of Christ. This is this was not wrote to unbelievers. So please let's make sure we get that clear. And I think we confuse that quite a bit throughout scripture that when the Lord is talking about righteousness and purity and sanctification and repentance that people have been led to believe that's for unbelievers and a majority of that, a majority of scripture that refers to that is actually focused and instructed to those who are called within the body of Christ. So I hope that that's clear. I'm going to go ahead and read. Uh, there is a... Um, this is actually talking about the end times. Uh, 1 John actually speaks a lot about the end times and about the rapture, uh, believe it or not. And so it's it's looked over quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and read. So please bear with me. I got a little bit of a set up here to so I can read this to you. So anyway, <clears throat> this is 1 John 2.18 is where I'm going to start. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we must know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. So he's talking about those who were once sealed in Christ, but because of their actions, because of their hardness of heart, because of their evil hearts, it was plain that, hey, look, they're not part of us. Because, look, they went out from us, and they're not following the scripture in which was originally spoken to them. But we have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you do know the truth, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who has denied that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist. He who denies, denies the Father and the Son, the one who denies the Son. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. No one who denies the Son has a Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you have heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is a promise that he made to us eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you receive from us abides in you, and you must you and you have no need that anyone should teach you. So he's telling us, hey, listen, you have the gospel. Do not add to the gospel. You do not listen to anybody but the gospel. You listen to the truth. Let's see. But as his anointing teaches teaches you about everything, and it is true. And is no lie, just as it has taught you to abide in him. And now, little children, again, he's, he's referring to those who are sealed in Christ. Abide in him so that when he appears, this is when he begins to talk about the rapture of the church, we may have confidence and not shrink back from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. 
everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. We are not to go back into the world after receiving him. He's literally telling us, hey, look, you must continue in righteousness. See what kind of blood the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so, so we are. This, uh, the reason why the world does not know us is that it does not know him, beloved. We are God's children. And what we will be has not appeared. So this is when we are changed. This is referring to uh, in the passage in 1 Corinthians when we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. But we know that when he appears, when Christ appears to remove us in the rapture, we shall be like him. This is when we are changed. This is when we get our glorified bodies. Because we shall be like him, and everyone who thus hopes in him puts himself, uh, purifies himself as he is pure. This is why we are supposed to remain pure. This is why we are supposed to remain holy and righteous. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. We know that he appeared to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning, so we cannot continue down a path of unrighteousness. We must be completely diligent in practicing righteousness. We do not go back into sin after we give ourselves to Christ. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or is known by him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of, the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. But this is the evidence, this is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is one who does not love his brother. All right, sorry about that. It's a little bit still dark as I'm reading this, but I wanted to get that across that it is very clear in that passage of scripture that we do not continue in sin that we abide in him and I know there's been this once saved always saved message because the message has been distorted through men that practice unrighteousness because of their deeds are unrighteous they want to live in unrighteousness so they want to perpetuate that unrighteousness to those who listen and follow them I hope this is clear and I hope this is understandable scripture just told us hey look if you if you continue in sin you're not even of god you're of the devil he is talking to believers he had just mentioned about the rapture of the church about when about when uh, christ appears that we will be like him and there is no sin in him so we cannot continue believing that hey look we got our ticket punched then we can do whatever we want. That is not scriptural. So I hope that that is very clear. You know, in these last days, we must be uh, diligent. I know that that was a little choppy when I was reading it because it was a little bit hard for me to see, believe it or not. The, the camera is quite a bit brighter than what it is in here, so I do apologize. I'll have a light next time. But anyway, I wanted to reassure those who are sealed in Christ and those who who may believe that it's okay to live any way you want and to continue to sin or to have a secret sin or to to do things that are unrighteous and just be okay that is not the case matter of fact there's some passages of scripture that hey look uh, our heart will convict us when we are when we are sealed in Christ and when we do something that is not of God, our heart is going to convict us that we do not want to do that because all of us fall short of his glory. Every one of us, every one of us 
has fallen short of his glory. But thanks be to our Savior, Jesus Christ, that he made a way. He made a way to cleanse us from unrighteousness. When he bought us on that cross, he cleansed us from unrighteousness. As we live in this world, as we continue on trying to perpetuate the gospel, the enemy's going to come against us. And we're going to be tempted. We're going to be... Uh, we're, we're going to be faced with many trials, and sometimes we stumble, sometimes we mess up. But the Lord gave us the beautiful gift of grace that we can work through these things, that we do not have to, to live in sin any longer, that once our garments that we received when we were born again, when they become dirty and defiled through sin, through living in this world, because it does say in Scripture that, hey, look, there is no sin in Christ. So when we sin... He allows us to cleanse that. He allows our light to shine brightly because the more we sin, the more we turn our back and walk away from God, the more that we not live in righteousness and holiness, our, our light begins to dim and even go out. Our oil runs dry. We must not allow this to happen, but we must live in righteousness and sanctification to take up our cross daily and to live for Him. It even says to practice righteousness and not to practice sin. So I do challenge you to please read 1 John for yourself. I mentioned this a few videos back and I also encourage you to read 2 Peter. You know, there's many passages of scripture that are um, left out of the discussion. And we must understand that we must take the whole gospel because you got to remember something like I mentioned before. Jesus is never going to let us go, but guess what? We can push him away. We can push him away because of his great mercy, of his grace. He gives us a free will to choose him or to not choose him. Like I mentioned before, I challenge you to study where your name can be blotted out of the book of life. I know this is not a, a topic that is brought up. In Revelation, Jesus himself is speaking, hey, look, because you're living in sin, I'm paraphrasing, so I challenge you to read it. And because you chose not to you chose not righteousness, but you continued in sin, I will blot your name out of the book of life. So, again, I'm paraphrasing that. I pray that you study it. There's no need for me to give out scripture. This is something that, as a believer, we should know. You know, I could give out hundreds of passages of scripture, but again, this has always been a heart issue. I've mentioned this on many occasions. Where is your heart? Is your heart for this world? Is your heart for the the beast system that you see going out through the whole world? Do you put your faith in man, in man's pharmacia, man's medication? Or do you put your faith fully in Jesus Christ? And so we must ask ourselves these things for ourselves. Scripture just told us that anyone who practices lawlessness is of the devil. And he's talking to believers Understand this. He is talking to Christians in this passage of Scripture. He's not talking to unbelievers. But those who practice righteousness is of God, of His Father's holy kingdom. You know, in these last days, I've made many videos about this. We are not perfect. No one is perfect, not even one. Only, only God, as good Scripture tells us. But again, we have an advocate. Jesus Christ the righteous. So please go to him. If you've messed up, if you've taken this abomination, now that the, the restrainer is still here, go before the Lord and beg for mercy, beg for forgiveness and repentance. That is my suggestion. That is my advice. We are in the final hours. We are in the final days. We are in the final moments of the fig tree generation. The dispensation of grace will shoot soon pass away. The tribulation will start right after the rapture of the church. Be a blessed day, guys. I love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Bye-bye.